Some of the most popular vehicles across the globe right now are pickup trucks, and within Star Citizen, Consolidated Outland are trying to reflect upon that with their new ship, the Nomad. I'm Forrester, and in this video I'll be reviewing the Star Citizen ship, the Consolidated Outland Nomad. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing with the Nomad as one of the flyable ships. She sits in the starter ship category, although at the upper end, competing with the likes of the Avenger. It's really designed for people just getting into the game, and to fill a few different gameplay niches. For those who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll recognise the usual format for this video. I've split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help you navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the 80% of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1 – Ship Tour and entry into the Nomad is via the port or left side, slightly towards the rear of the middle. This deploys a ladder in which you walk up into the Nomad itself. On either side of the entrance are two weapon storage racks. At the rear of the Nomad is a small window where you can look out on the cargo bay, and on the opposite side to the entry ladder is component access. There are an additional two doors in this room. On the starboard side is a door which leads into a small toilet. And on the port side is a small cargo storage area for personal effects. Moving towards the front of the ship, the second room that you reach is the habitation room. There's a nice bed, and on the opposite side, a small kitchenette. And right at the front is the cockpit, with a leather embossed chair. Part 2 – Combat Performance Whilst the Nomad isn't a combat ship per se, it comes fairly well armed, with three size 3 hardpoints. By default, they're equipped with three gimbaled panther repeaters, although I've replaced the two top mounted weapons with mantis repeaters for this video. That's supplemented by eight size 2 missiles. All in all, that's not overwhelming firepower, but it's very reasonable for a ship at this price point, and is sufficient to deal with smaller threats and modest combat missions. And how does all that firepower stack up? Pretty well. The Nomad can hold its own in combat, it's not going to set any records, but if you end up in a scrape, the Nomad will probably see you right. Defensively, the Nomad carries three size 1 shield generators. The size 1 shield generators are notorious on this channel for being weak, but having a third generator does help in making the Nomad a little more survivable. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility So, not forgetting that this is a space truck, the Nomad handles fairly well. It's clearly not as precise as some of the sleek fighters, but the nose points as you might expect a small ship to. In particular, the ship yours really well, which was somewhat surprising. The top speed at 1170 meters per second feels about right, and understandably, the acceleration and deceleration to get there and back is a little sluggish, but then again, this is a starter ship. That strings together fairly well in a vacuum. What really helps is that the cooling performance means that you can push a fair amount of afterburner or boost in order to make the manoeuvres that you want to. Most of the thrust is still in the rear, so as you move the nose in coupled flight, the Nomad will begin to kill its momentum to make the turn. Planet side, things start to drop away a little. The same effect holds true, with turns bleeding away airspeed, but pushing beyond SCM speeds does feel more like pushing, 
The Nomad loses some of its handling properties and, moreover, drinks hydrogen fuel at an even more alarming rate. When operating the Nomad planet side, you'll want to do what you need to on the ground and then head straight up to the thinner atmosphere at altitude where it handles better. Visibility in the Nomad, however, is fairly good. The cockpit is set out to the front of the ship, and although there are a few struts which can get in the way, the full cockpit is glass, including above and below. That means that you can usually get a good glance at whatever you're looking to see, which helps for visibility during takeoff and landing. And speaking of takeoff and landing, the Nomad has some unusual hovering skids which takes some getting used to. There are some advantages, notably you can use them as you might in a Huey helicopter and pull some fairly aggressive rolling landings. On the flip side, it takes a lot of getting used to, particularly because you'll always want to land at a flat and level attitude, or you'll get a lot of bumps and the HUD doesn't always show you what you want to see in order to keep straight and level. And speaking of the HUD, the panel screen is a bit too bright. The controls beneath are nicely laid out and the idea of a virtualized cockpit is in keeping with some modern fighter jets. Time to talk about quantum drive? Okay, slow, 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 replace the stock drive. That said, the range is incredibly reasonable, with the Nomad able to cross the entire Stanton system without stopping to refuel. And this is a starter ship, so not all that. Part 4. Operating Costs Thankfully, as a starter ship, the Nomad is very cheap to rearm, repair and refuel. Mostly, the costs will come from replacing the missiles if they've been fired. The Nomad is very thirsty for hydrogen fuel at the moment, whether that remains the case remains to be seen. It is possible to refuel on the fly with the onboard hydrogen scoop, although it does take a while. But refueling the Nomad is fairly cheap, so probably just do that instead. The Nomad does carry 24 standard units of cargo, which isn't major, particularly compared to the sliding scale of cargo ships, but is very good for a starter ship and makes it almost worthwhile to do some small hauls. In addition, there's plenty of room aboard for delivery boxes to run contract missions. The downside is that, much like a pickup truck, other players can see your cargo. That may or may not make you more of a target in the future, although with the advent of the whole series potentially in the future, with fully externalized cargo, perhaps they'll be more interesting targets. That rear cargo bay can also fit small rovers, with a deployable ramp to aid in loading. That includes the rock mining rover, although it's a tight fit. Outside of that, some of the combat contracts are flyable with the Nomad, which again is helpful for a starter ship. You want to take more care with claim jumper missions. For a better pilot than me, they may be doable, but by no means easy. And then, part five the verdict. So it's probably helpful to frame this up at the start of the verdict, this is a starter ship. It's comparatively cheap, with a package running for a few weeks inclusive of game access for $80. At time of recording, there's no in-game price. As a starter ship, the Nomad is a pretty good platform for new players. Able to complete Pretty much any of the money-making activities helps a new player to build up some funds to buy a ship they want, and the inclusion of a bed and some limited internal storage helps to future-proof the ship. It's also fairly easy to fly, and it compares fairly well to the Avenger, which is the go-to starter ship these days. Ogi, over at the United Space Confederation organization, details in the description, did note that the visual style of the Nomad is somewhat of a departure from the usual consolidated Outland type, notably the Mustang series. And sometimes the frame rate can absolutely tank when you hop into the cockpit, although sometimes not, so we'll chalk that down to early implementation. All in all, the Nomad makes for a very interesting starter ship, so my verdict is going to be that for a new player who knows they'll enjoy Star Citizen, it's probably worth it. $80 is still a fairly expensive price for a AAA title, even one as compelling as Star Citizen, 
But for somebody who has done their research and knows that this is their kind of sandbox, the Nomad offers a solid starting out platform. If you found this review helpful, you may also be interested in my review of The Avenger. Please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content. Thank you for watching.